Hello everybody and welcome back to LMM and if you're enjoying what you're seeing on the channel at the moment have a look at this video a like and maybe subscribing to the channel to help us grow and perhaps even check out our Patreon. Today we're going to be looking at this that's been sent to me by my friends over at Sterling Kit. This is a hot air engine and despite what you may be thinking it's not in fact a Sterling engine. This is in fact a Ryder Ericsson beta engine. Now the main thing about one of these is the fact that it only has a single cylinder with what's called a displacer in it but more on that later. But remember if you quite like the look of this you can go and save money on selling kit by using the code lorry for 12% off. This thing is 12.5 centimeters long by 7. centimeters wide and it's 12.8 centimeters tall. So it's a lovely small showpiece and I love all of it. I love all the workmanship across all of it. I just think it's absolutely beautiful. I love this little mechanism going up and down. Now, what's particularly interesting about this one is that this comes with a water pump here. So with every stroke, it draws water up through the container here into the water jacket and then back down. This is a really cool little feature because your general problem with a traditional Stirling hot air engine, like the ones that Stirling Kit have sent me before, is that the whole thing gets too hot. And this relies on hot air expanding and then cool air then contracting. On a traditional simple Stirling engine, eventually the thing just gets too hot and it stops running because there's no great differential. The whole system has got warm. This thing, because it has a water jacket, means it will keep cool. And I'm told reliably that this will run for a good 15 minutes until it runs out of gas. Because yes, this isn't like my standard methylated spirits engines. This runs on a little gas tank. And for those of you who have seen my live streams, yes, you should be scared. I'm going to be playing with gas. I think this is a beautiful work of art to start off with. Just all of it, particularly on this little wooden base, is absolutely phenomenal. I, I am very happy with this. So the notable features are we have a little hand tap here, and that's for the flow of the gas. The flywheel is here, which comes around, which activates the beam and the pump. And also the displacer is on that as well. I think that's it's so pretty. Some of the engines I've been sent before look a little bit basic, whereas this, this is a proper, proper work of art. So the first thing we're going to do is assemble it. It comes with the chimney not attached, so that just drops into, into there like so. Then it comes with this tiny thing here. Now it's easy to go, oh, I don't know what that is and forget about it, but it's a crucial part. You will need a pair of tweezers because this part goes inside and rests on top of the burner. Now it's a bit of a tricky fit to get it in, but you have to get it on top of that burner, otherwise the thing won't run properly. And that is the construction complete. Other features I really like are you have this little working door. And so there's a little latch on it, and you can open that to get to your fire. And I just, I think that's so cool. And then shut it again and put the latch on. Now, word of warning, obviously that will get hot. Now, you mine also you will notice there's a few scratches on it. That's because I have extensively run this before doing this video. I am really impressed with this. Uh, some of the other Sterling engines are kind of a one hit wonder. You run them once and they do this. This continues to just impress me. I think it's great. It really, it's just that next stage of model. So how this thing works is relatively simple. As mentioned, this is the beta engine. So we have our firebox down here. Yes, with our burner in it. And that warms the air, causing it to expand. And that expansion drives the piston upwards. The piston being attached to this shaft in the middle. As the piston moves up through a series of cranks, that causes the flywheel to move, which then moves the beam from its own series of cranks, which is attached to the displacer. The displacer is a loose fitting piston in the cylinder, which allows the air to move around it. So as the displacer moves, it literally displaces the air from the hot end and the cold end of the cylinder. As the piston goes up, the displacer also comes up which will displace the air from the cold end of the cylinder. This cold air has already begun to contract and that draws the piston back down. As the motion follows this and the piston drops, the motion causes the displacer to follow it, which will now displace the hot air from the bottom of the cylinder back to where it can interact with the piston again and push the piston back up, thus completing the cycle. It is beautifully simple takes a bit to get your head around, but it's wonderful. There's no external forces. Everything is contained within it and it just works. It's absolutely a beautiful motion to watch. My other hot air engines, the Stirling engines, they have the two cylinder system. You have hot air, which expands, 
and then that air moves over to the cold area where it contracts and completes the system. This is much more elegant altogether in this. So a bit on the hot air engine. These were billed to be the next big thing. In fact, Ryder Ericsson said that they saw a future where there was one of their machines in every factory. And you can see where they were coming from. Compared to a steam engine, which this thing superseded, they are much more simple to operate. You don't need a trained operator to keep an eye on the fire or to maintain water and steam pressure. You just light a fire, spin the wheel, and away it goes. There's also no chance of explosions. Obviously with a steam engine, particularly the early ones, if things went south, they had the unfortunate habit of going boom. This presents absolutely zero risk. As a machine, this is far less complicated. It is remarkably simple. And most importantly, you don't need a source of water for it. A steam engine, as it goes, it uses up the water. It's expelled out of the chimney and it's gone. A hot air engine is a closed system. The air that expands and contracts inside the machine is the same air. It's trapped in there. It doesn't go anywhere. Meaning that this could be used in places where you didn't have access to a lot of water. Now, obviously, this one has water cooling, but it doesn't really use that much. You'll lose a little bit by evaporation from the cooling pot, but it's not anything compared to a steam engine. Also, this is much more efficient than a steam engine. The typical steam engine is somewhere in the region of 5% efficient. A hot air engine is more like 30% efficient. Obviously, you just have an open flame, which is not the most efficient thing, but the engine does sit on top of that, so all your heat that rises is being used to run the engine. All of this sounds really good and positive, and for the time, this was groundbreaking. The problem is that they're not actually that powerful. It has next to no torque. In fact, compared with my other Stirling engines, when you run them, they have about enough power to generate the electricity to run an LED. So we're burning a flame to run an engine to run an LED. It's not very efficient. And if you start scaling it up, it turns out they don't scale particularly well. A theoretical 300 horsepower engine was the size of a small flat compared to an internal combustion engine, which is, well, you, you know how big that is. That said, despite the limitations, they had a lot of practical applications. Things like running a pump for drawing water. You could just light a fire, set the machine in motion, and off it would work. So much simpler than a steam engine that they've replaced. Smaller engines could be found in the kitchens of large country estates, for instance, being put in a cellar to be able to pump water up for the household and the garden. And larger engines were used in factories and foundries to drive machines. The limiting torque factor, though, was always going to be an issue. And so I assume rather than having one steam engine driving the overhead, you would need an engine per machine. But again, it represented a simpler and safer way of powering machinery. And then the internal combustion came along and that was simpler again and significantly more powerful. And as a result, the hot air engine fell out of favor very quickly. However, we should just appreciate the simplicity of the design. It is just a heat source, a cylinder and a piston that just works. It is absolutely beautifully simple. I don't know anything else that is just so graceful working with no steam, no pressurized gas, just the expansion of hot air. Hot air engines are typically only used as a static engine. They are installed in one place and they drive something. They don't really work if you put them into, say, a car. They're quite heavy, they're difficult to start, and they don't really change speed very well. They're very good at just working away at a constant speed. They're quite hard to moderate, which all of this means it's basically useless to put it into a train or a car. But talking of working, let's go through the prep of this and get it ready to go, because again, I think this is superb. So this thing comes with actual oil holes for the mechanism. I think that's great. It shows it's much more than just a toy. This is a model. So we're just going to get a bead of oil on the end here and drop it into that oil hole there. And then we're going to drop it into that oil divot there. And there's one on the end here. And so that will lubricate the cross shaft. Then I'm just going to give a cursory wipe over all the other moving parts, just to make sure there is a bit of lubrication in there. It just means that it will keep giving me good service for years to come by just dribbling it across there on the return there and on the return there and there. I'm also going to just put some on top of the water pump mechanism on here because I actually really like this. Now that's the basic oiling up done. 
Next up, it's time to give it some gas. So we take our container here, which I've put a special adapter on so it doesn't hit the chimney. We line it up with the hole and go, and now I've got gas. Next stage is to fill up the container here with water. Now I'm using distilled water just because it means there won't be any impurities in it that could possibly scale up the inside of my mechanism. I filled that up to about three quarters of the way and I've got a bit of water left in here. And that's because before we run it, we have to prime the system, which involves taking off this little screw top here. Now, the first time I did this, it was on exceptionally tight and I had to get a pair of pliers and now it's just finger tight. But just bear in mind, it is a screw. You do need to unscrew it. So the next stage is we're going to actually open up that and crack the gas and then light that. Which is burning very nicely and we'll just close the door. Now I'm going to put my syringe on the top so we force water in here with a good seal until it comes out of the system at the other end showing that it's full. At which point we can put this tiny little thing back in. Now again it's important to make sure we prime this every time we run it otherwise it won't run properly. Now this thing heats up and starts running incredibly quickly. Already it's got a couple of strokes in it and just like that it's now ready to go. Now I found with this that it runs quite quickly. It starts like this and as it heats up and gets more and more engine it starts to run really really fast. You can hear the squeak of the water pump and see here in a few moments as it starts chucking water back out. And there we go, our constant feed of water coming out to go back into the cooling pot. Now I thought that this runs quite fast, so I've come up with a genius solution. You see, what I've done is I've got myself a piece of wood with an electric motor on it. Now the electric motor isn't going to do anything because this doesn't really have enough speed or torque. But what it will do is if I put this over, this will serve as a load. As as the engine has the habit of kind of running away, I've added this to it. And this acts as kind of a governor that stops it from just going crazy speeds. And I can just adjust this. It shows you how very, very weak the machine is. It's because all I have to do is stretch this a little bit and you can already hear it slow down. So it's a constant matter of just adjusting this. And if you can get it right, you can just get it to run at a nice amount like that. Fast enough to appreciate it, but it's not running stupid. Again, it's not making enough power to actually do anything. It's just a good way of holding that speed. It goes much faster, you just, you just don't appreciate the speed. You just don't appreciate the machine working. I love the fact that you've got the drips of water just coming out of here into the cooling pot. It, it really makes it a just complete working machine. It's more than just a model that's running once. There's stuff going on, it's actually doing something. It's drawing water up into it, it's getting rid of the water, it's actually working. Oh, there we go. It's amazing just changing the angle of this to make it run a bit more smoothly has increased the engine. They are so weak. And all of this without any steam, without any real pressure, this is just hot air expanding up, then getting cold and contracting and drawing the piston back down in rapid succession. That's all it is. It's so simple. There we go. I think it's more satisfying when you can actually drive something off an engine like this. Even if I'm not actually doing something. When you can run a light or something, it's really satisfying. But just sticking this over like this, it just, I don't know, having the belt drive just makes it a bit more interesting for me. So that's the big thing that would make this better for me personally if there was a pulley attached to it so I could run stuff off it and attempt to generate some electricity or something. There we go. I love it when you just get it a little slower. It is so, so dependent on that whole machine, that whole inertia, the whole momentum in that flywheel. And just watching it fly over is just beautiful. And I'm in love with the amount of control I can have on this for just slowing it down a little bit by adding a bit more tension to the band drive. So at this speed, you can kind of appreciate it all as it flies around. When it goes much faster, you just can't appreciate it. So the idea is you can pull it away to slow the engine down and then bring it back in and hold the machine at a lower RPM. Now, that is the gas run out. 
but because there's so much heat left into it, the machine will keep running for some time, even without. It is absolutely phenomenal. It feels so much more of a proper engine than some of the other hot air engines that I have. The mechanism is absolutely beautiful and I've been running it for a while and it just, it's all working as it should. Everything is still beautifully tight. And just that movement of the piston coming up and the displacer moving down, the way they come together, but they don't quite hit is absolutely mesmerizing. It's absolutely incredible and I love it. So a massive great thank you to Sterling Kit for sending me this. I think it's brilliant. It's certainly the best thing they've sent me so far. And if you want one, remember there is a link in the video description to this product and to Sterling Kit's website. And remember, you can use the code LORRY to get 12% off and buy yourself one of these. And if you don't want a hot air engine quite as expensive or complex as this, remember they do the little one you can get. You just put on your cup of tea in the morning and it will just run quite happily on that. And I think they're really smart. So have a look at those, buy something from the shop, because the more of you guys who buy something, the more stuff they'll send me to review and play with. And frankly, if they're going to send me stuff like this, I buy one more because this is amazing. And that was the end of the review. However, whilst filming all of the extra little bits I needed to make this video happen, I can't in good faith continue without telling you some of the things that have happened with this. One of the screws at the top of the piston managed to unwind itself and eject itself into outer space. The dowel that holds the flywheel in has managed to come out and disconnect it from the shaft. And whilst I was actually filming this little bit talking about stuff that's gone wrong, the little part inside the pump, the thread in that, had unwound itself a little grub screw and come out of that. And then most alarmingly, the valve for the gas there managed to start leaking gas, uh, which meant that when I was running it, the tap itself caught fire and also vented the entirety of the gas canister to atmosphere. So for quite an expensive model, as much as I really like it and think it's a wonderful showpiece, I would genuinely expect it to be a lot lot better and not to have these faults. Now, if you do still want one of these, you may well need to do some repairs to it to keep it running, which is more than I'd expect. And equally, if you are going to run it, do what I did and get a load for it. Because I think part of the problem is it runs so fast, it just tries to destroy itself and self-destruct. It might just be my one's a bad example of the batch, but um, I'd probably recommend going with a different model. There's plenty of good stuff on there. Remember, use the code. Um, have a look on there. But the two other engines that I've shown in this video are available there and they've both been superb. So I recommend getting one of those. I mean, this is stunning. It really is a stunning model. It's great, but I, it's, it's too greatly flawed for the money you have to pay for it. And that's genuinely disappointing. Anyway, uh, video is coming up on the screen now. Thanks for watching. Do check out the website. Uh, do use the code LORRY for 12% uh, off. Ta-ra. Mm -hmm.